Hi everybody, Steve from Steve's Makerspace. We are in P5JS and I want to talk about sampling images in tiles. What I'm showing you right now are some of the things I've created with this technique. I'll start off by showing a couple of my projects that I think turned out pretty well and then we'll get into the code later. I'll talk about both sampling from images, sampling from things you've drawn, and then how to turn those samples into a set of tiles. There are links in the description to these projects and you can play with them in your browser. This video has timestamps so you can skip ahead if you want. The first project I'm going to show you is sampling parts of this Monet painting of water lilies. And here is some tile sampling. So if I hit the start button, you'll see I get different samplings from the painting. I can change the tile width and the tile height. I can change the padding around the tiles. So we can get all sorts of different images using this. Let's do something that's wider than it is tall. Give it a little padding. I also have Van Gogh's Starry Night we'll be sampling from. So let's load up that image. And now it's taking parts of Starry Night. So that one's called Tile Sampling YT. YT is for YouTube, so I know which ones I'm using on YouTube. The other sampling project is using this wavy line art maker that I've shown before on the channel. I'll leave a link to the video where I talked about this and also a link to this original code. But here is the sampling of the wavy line art maker put into tiles. This one is called wavy line tiles YT. We can change the tiles. Let's reduce the padding a bit. And then it has all the variables from the wavy line art maker that can be modified. So I can change this to 55. So it's got wider lines. Or we can go down to five. And now it's got really tiny lines. We can reduce the alpha, get rid of some outline lines. And now I get something like this. So I think this is fun to play with. And I'm pleased with how it's turned out. Before I get into the coding, if you've liked what you've seen so far, if you like what I've done, please give me a like, consider subscribing to the channel. Okay, let's get into the coding. So before we get into tiles, let's talk about just loading an image. If we click here, you'll see that I've got some assets that I've loaded. This is simply create a folder first for the assets, then upload a file to that folder you can drag a file into here. And I'm using these old paintings because they're in the public domain. So first we declare a global variable, IMG, and then we load the image. And this is the location of the image and the name of the image. And so IMG equals this image. So now the image is in memory. Now what we often do with create a canvas is we just give it a couple of hard keyed numbers uh, and then if we load the image, I'm doing that with image IMG 00. 00 is the starting place of the image. So if I were to say like 100, oops, 100, then it starts over here. But we're loading image at the top left corner. But this isn't the entire image. This is just part of the image because the image is larger than our canvas. Now, instead of create canvas 400, 400, I could also do create canvas the image width and the image height. And so now we're getting the image, the full image, but I can't actually look at it all on my canvas. I have to scroll back and forth to see it all. So this is img.width and img.height for the canvas size. So what if we want the entire image to show on the entire available space that we have for a canvas. So what we need to do is to resize the image. So here I'm doing img.resize window width minus 20. I'm giving myself 20 extra space here just because I don't like it going all the way to the edge of the window. And so this is looking at this space right here to see how wide this is. That's the window width. And when we put window width comma zero, it resizes the image so that the width of the image fits the width of the available space. So that's working fine for this image, except what if we have a canvas that's like this? Now it doesn't work. It should have shortened it up. I have to scroll down in order to see the entire image. So how do I do both? So the way I've accomplished this, I'm first getting the aspect ratio of the available window space here. 
I'm also getting the aspect ratio of the image, and then I'm comparing the two. And if the window ratio is larger than the image ratio, then I'm resizing based on the window height. And if it's the reverse, then I'm resizing based on the window width. And so now, no matter how big my canvas is, if I shrink it up, it'll shrink the image to fit. Or if my canvas is this size, it shrinks the canvas based on the width and it all fits. So if you ever have an image that you want to fully show in the available space, then you can just copy this code right here. So now that you know how to show the image, let's look at sampling the image. I got inspired to explore this topic after watching some videos by Jeff Thompson, who is a professor and an excellent coding teacher. I'll leave a link to his channel in the video description. So for this, let's switch over to the Van Gogh painting. And I can use a git function and we'll show it. So you can see I've grabbed this church and placed it here. So I'm using img.git. I'm going to the place 200 by 200, which is probably around here. And then I'm grabbing 150 width and 150 height of the image, basically grabbing a rectangle. And then I'm putting that into a new variable called tile, and then I'm showing that tile. So if I just get the image, I'm not actually showing it yet. I then have to show it. So I'm showing the image. What's the image I'm showing? It's tile, and I'm showing it at position 50-50. Now, I don't actually have to show this. I can get rid of that now, and it's still sampling the image, even though the image is not being shown. So I could change this so I'm only sampling 100 wide, or I could change the position of where I want to place it. So that is the basics of tiling. So now let's look at the tile sampling Y2. I'm preloading the image. I'm checking the aspect ratio, figuring out what my window size needs to be, creating the canvas. Next, I have to figure out how many tiles I'm going to be able to draw across and down based on the information that the user provides, tile width, height, the frame, and the padding. I don't think I talked about the frame. That's if you wanted to increase the amount of space around the outside of the painting, uh, then you could increase the frame. We also know the width of the canvas, the height of the canvas, so based on that, we can calculate how many tiles across we can fit, how many tiles down we can fit. Now, if we add back all of those things, the tile width and the number of tiles, the padding, the frame, and we put all that together, it doesn't exactly equal the width of the canvas. There's a little bit of a gap left over. So we have to take that into account for where we're gonna place these tiles. So I've got another variable here called extra width. So here I'm adding up all of those things and then I'm subtracting out the width of the canvas and then dividing by two so that I get the extra padding right here from here to here. So that's my extra width and then I do the same thing to get an extra height, whatever the extra padding is right here. It's a little tricky trying to figure out this math. It was more difficult than I thought it would be. Uh, it made me want to pull my hair out a little bit, but I managed it. I don't think I need to go over all the details in here. You can study this if you like. So then having figured out how many tiles I'll have across and how many tiles I'll have down, I can create two for loops, one for the X and one for the Y, and we're going to sample from the image but the random sampling of the image will be starting at the zero position, the leftmost position of the image, but we don't want to go all the way to the rightmost position of the image for starting because then it's gonna be sampling stuff to the right of the image, which doesn't make any sense. We know what the tile width is gonna be, so we wanna come in by that tile width. So the random sample is the image width minus the tile width. So it picks a starting X position, and then it does the same thing with a starting Y position, the image height minus the tile height. 
and we have to floor this or round it because when it, we're using this get function, we can't be sampling a decimal. So we get the x, we get the y, we get the tile width and the tile height. So now we've grabbed part of the painting and now we need to place it in a particular position. So it can be helpful rather than looking at this first tile, let's look at this second tile. We have to add up a number of things to find the x position of this tile. It's going to be the extra padding, it's going to be the frame, plus the tile width of the, this tile, plus the padding between these tiles. So that's what I've got here is tile width plus padding, plus the frame, plus the extra width, and the tile width plus padding is going to be multiplied by however many tiles we're on right now. So going from tile 2 to tile 3, I'm adding an extra tile width plus tile padding. So that's what this is right here. And then I do a similar thing with the Y. So now I know the X and the Y position of the tile. And I can do image tile X comma Y. So that's how that works. That's the last of the code. Now if your tile height is too much, like this, then you just get a blank. But if the tile height is just about the size of the canvas, then you get this happy accident happens. I haven't done anything to correct for this. I think it's kind of interesting. Now, of course, you could add some offset so that this is done on purpose. So let's add a tile offset variable with random negative 50 to 50 in between the I and the J loop. And then we'll add that tile offset to the calculation of the Y and we get something like this. So that's kind of interesting. Unfortunately, this does not work with X. If I do a tile offset with X, I just get this, which really doesn't look any good. So I think if you wanted a tile offset with X, you would have to do a for loop and save all the offsets into an array. But I'm not going to do that. You can do that if you want. Now let's look at the code for the wavy lines tiles. I've got the same global variables at the top, and then at the very end, after drawing all the wavy line stuff, I've got the exact same code that I had from the other program with one difference. The one difference is with that picture I was using image here and in this case you see I'm doing canvas 2 dot image and then later on I've got image over here. So let me show you what happens if I do this the same way that I was doing with the picture with the Monet stuff. So if I comment this out and bring this in. We'll comment this out and this out, and then we'll hit go, and we get this. So the first problem is that I've still got the sampling image here. If I tried to do a black background, then this would just all turn black. The second problem is that it's sampling itself. It's kind of hard to tell with this, I know, but if you look at this first tile, it looks normal. But if you look at these last tiles, you see this here, there's a line, and here, and here. It's because it's sampling itself. Like this right here is sampling from maybe right here. So we don't want it sampling itself. I mean, you, that might be interesting to you, but that's not what I want. So what we need to do is we need to create a new invisible canvas. So that's what this is doing let canvas 2 equal create graphics and so create graphics is just like creating a canvas except it's an invisible canvas i probably didn't put this in the best place i could have put this in the setup section but it works okay here so then instead of putting the image directly onto the canvas i'm going to put the image on my invisible canvas and we're not seeing any of those tiles yet because it's an invisible canvas we're just seeing the source image right here. And if I do background, now we don't see the source image anymore. So after we placed all of our images onto our invisible canvas, then we have to show our invisible canvas. And that's what this is doing. It's showing on the canvas, the invisible canvas. And we show that starting at position zero, zero, the top left corner. 
So that is how you can take a static image and turn it into tiles. So this has actually been part one of two videos on tiling. In the second video, we're going to talk about rotating tiles and also talk about animation in tiles. So look for part two of this video coming out very soon. So that's going to do it for today. If you like this video, give it a like, consider subscribing to the channel, ring the bell for notifications. Comments are always welcome. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye now. Steve's Makerspace.